video, we will show you how to submit routine locate requests using iTIC. After logging in and while looking at the main menu, select Submit a Locate Request. This will bring you to the iTIC user information and excavator information sections. Be sure your name and contact info are in the iTIC user information section. Confirm all excavator information and make any necessary changes. If you need to change the primary telephone number, company name, or email address, you will need to access the Edit Account function from the main menu. When you are ready, click Next Step. This will bring you to Steps 1 and 2. First Step 1, Contact Information. Enter the name and telephone number of someone who will be familiar with the excavation. If you will be the only person involved in the excavation, enter Same here. For Type of Work, enter the purpose of the excavation, not the method. You can use the keyword auto search function here. For instance, entering a word like sign will bring up a list of potential matches. For work being done for, enter the name of the company, organization, or person you will be doing the excavation for. If you will be using explosives during the excavation, select yes from the explosives drop down menu. Otherwise, select no. When you are ready, click next step. This will bring you to Step 3, Location Information. In this section, you will describe the physical area where the excavation will take place. Using the drop-down menu, select the county where the work will take place. If you will be working in Washington, D.C., you will need to select which quadrant, Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, or Southwest. If you will be working within the city limits of Baltimore, select Baltimore City. In the City Place field, enter the name of the city or place where the work is being done. You can use the keyword auto search function here as well. In the address field, enter the number of the address where the work will take place. If the worksite involves multiple addresses, leave this field blank and reference the addresses in the extent of work field. In the street field, enter the name of the road where the work will take place. In the intersecting street field, enter the name of the road that intersects the dig street closest to where the work is being done. Please keep in mind that this may not necessarily be a major intersection. If you will be working in the Maryland State right-of-way and have obtained a permit for your project, click Yes here. Otherwise, click No. If you do click Yes, you will need to specify which agency issued the permit and list the permit number. In the Extent of Work field, describe the physical area where the excavation will take place. Be as detailed as possible. It is extremely important that you describe the entire work area and not just where you believe lines may be buried. Step 4 is the map it section. Here you will map out the geographic area where your work will take place. The iTIC computer thinks it has found a match for the address that I have entered. This potential match is represented by a place mark in the center of the screen. There are several tools in the map it section that can help ensure you are mapping in the correct area. We are currently viewing the area in the OCC map view. This is the base map for iTIC and contains information from the OCC maps database. You can change your map view by clicking one of the buttons in the upper right corner of the map screen. View overhead satellite imagery of the area by clicking the satellite button. The Google map is based on information from the Google Maps database. The hybrid map is a combination of OCC mapping and satellite imagery. You may need to zoom out in hybrid view to see all pertinent information. You will need to have the OCC map view selected in order to approve your mapping. You can also find out more information about certain map features by using the Identify tool. To do so, first select the Identify tool located in the lower right corner of the map screen. Then click on a map feature, like a waterway or section of row. The information will be displayed at the bottom of the map screen after the word Highlight. The measure tool can be used to measure distances on a map in a straight line or in a complex route. With the measure tool selected, first click on any point on the map. This will be your starting point. As you move the cursor, pay attention to the segment length and total length at the bottom of the screen. The total length represents the entire distance between your starting point and where your cursor is currently located, along the route you have created. 
The segment length represents the entire distance between your cursor's current position and the last point you made along the route. The measure tool can be very useful when following driving directions from a named intersection to an unnamed area, or when determining how far off the road an area must be mapped. When you have found the correct area, choose the Select Grids tool. Then simply click on the map where your work will take place. This will highlight the corresponding grid. If you are working on the western shore of Maryland, you can select up to three grids if needed. In Washington, D.C., you may only select one grid per ticket. To unselect a grid, simply click on it a second time. Once you have selected enough grids to encompass the entire worksite, move to Step 5, Start Date Information. The response due by date will default to the earliest available date and time based on when you are filing your ticket. You can change the type of ticket you are filing with the Ticket Type drop-down menu. If you would like to start your excavation the same day you are filing your locate request, choose the Insufficient Notice Ticket Type. If you would like utilities to respond prior to the normal 48-hour notice, but not the same day you filed your locate request, choose the Short Notice Ticket Type. If you are installing Mainline and or Service Fiber for Verizon, select either the Verizon FTTP or Verizon Fios Ticket Types. Please remember, excavators must wait until all notified utility operators have responded to the ticket before beginning excavation. Also, keep in mind that some ticket types may not be available for all users. When you are ready, click Next Step. You will then be presented with a list of utilities that will be notified as a result of your ticket. This list is determined solely by where you mapped the area in the Map It section. If there is a particular utility that you know to be missing from this list, it may be wise to return to the Map It section and remap the area. At this point, clicking Next Step will submit your locate request to the call center for review. You may now view your ticket, begin a new ticket, or return to the main menu.